Hello YouTube, what is up? Today we will be talking about how neural networks generate audio and specifically how to train our own music generation neural network. Um, this is going to be a very high level overview of how to accomplish this task in the Wolfram programming language, which is a a fairly beginner friendly uh, version of a machine learning framework that you can use to accomplish something like this. So the audio that you are hearing right now is generated by a neural network. This neural network is actually a two layer gated recurrent unit network with a history of 25 notes. So given the past 25, its job is to predict the next note. And by stringing a bunch of those predictions together, it can generate new music from, from nothing. So these examples that you're hearing in the background, they are generated with me giving the network a random starting note and the network generating some uh, musical sounding stuff from that note based on its knowledge of, or its intuition that it's gained from studying the music data set that I fed it. So let us jump in and see the things. So this right here is, um, it's a library that I made in the Wolfram language with a bunch of tools for processing MIDI data. This MIDI data will allow us to, um, the, what MIDI is, is it's a format for storing musical notes. So essentially each note is comprised of four pieces of data that we care about. It has a start time, a stop time, a volume for that note, and the actual pitch of the note. So uh, this package, this uh, Wolfram language library that I made, it has a bunch of utilities like uh, Howl MIDI import, Howl encode notes, Howl decode notes, Howl augment, and uh, the name of the library is Howl, so that's why it's all prefixed with this. It doesn't have to be like that, but I chose to. But um, yeah, so let us get started. Uh, in the past, I built this, right, this uh, little piece of code that will actually import all of the data that I have into a data set and it takes uh, 600 seconds to load 140 MIDI files that I've that I've downloaded from various content creators on the internet that I like so uh, this data set no failures is a special uh, function that or sorry it's the result of a special function, a query function that just deletes all of the failed imports from our data set. So this data set is clean with no imports. So you can see I export it to a file because it took 600 seconds to make it. So importing it will take like one second. So let's, let's start off by importing it. So yeah, basically what I'm going to do here is take my two layer GRU network and I'm going to recreate th that network with some slight modifications for training it more efficiently. And I'm also going to increase the size and we'll see what the end result is. So in the meantime, I'm just going to keep looping data from, or not looping data, looping music that was generated from the first edition. As, uh, as a form of torture to encourage me to finish this a little bit faster. So let's, uh, let's continue from here. 
Okay, so here I have on the left the old example that I'm using or that I made and then here on the right we're improving that. So with import I can just say dataset is equal to the saved data set that I that I have. Oh no, I don't want to do that. It's very important with this stuff. You put semicolons in the right spot because this is a REPL environment or a read eval print loop environment. So every command that you run, it will typically print something onto the screen unless you put a semicolon. So if I didn't stop that, it would have tried to print everything in the data set onto the screen, which would have taken a long time. So semicolons are important in the Wolfram language because it's a way to tell the computer to shut up. Let us continue. So now that I have my data set, let's look at the keys in the data set. Uh, so this ampersand and this slash slash are, are their special uh, notation of the Wolfram language that's just shorthand. So basically this ampersand says I want to evaluate this and then get the result of this. So and then this slash slash means I want to send this to the first function. So really this is the same thing as writing keys of or what I wanted to do is keys of first of data set and see here I need like more parentheses so it's just a shorthand of that anyway so that's kind of covering the basics of the Wolfram language shortcuts that I might use accidentally I'll try not to use them in this because I know everyone here is probably new it's kind of a an obscure language but it has a very good standard library with lots of different functionality that can be used like it can import MIDI files, just the standard library. I didn't have to download anything to make it import MIDI files, which is actually kind of impressive. Anyway, so as you see, the data set is a list. The type head of the data set is a list. E. I opened up help. Okay. And then each of these lists have three different keys. So they are maps, what other languages call them, or what Wolfram calls them associations that have a file key, a note key, and an encoded notes v1 key. So what I'm, the notes is a standard uh, sound note object. So if I do first of data set, So if I access the data set with a double square bracket at the position of uh, sorry, notes, so this is going to give me the first note in the first uh, key, or sorry, the first element of the data set. So the data set is hundred and forty five different MIDI songs and the average length of every song in the data set is uh, so I'm gonna map the link function to the data set uh, sorry and I don't care about that so So I want to map the note key to the data set and then map the length key to that and take the average. That gives me the average length of, or the average number of notes 
in our data set, which is 2046.08. So our data set average notes is 2046 notes. And uh, the three different keys that I have are the file name that those notes came from, the, which is a .midi file extension, then the notes, which are these uh, sound note objects that I'm about to show you. So like, this is the first note in the first song of the data set. And uh, Wolfram language can just play those notes like this. If I just wrap that in sound, then I can like play that. I mean, there's music playing in the background, but you know, that is what the first note of the first song is. So let's continue from there. We have this encoded uh, notes v1 uh, key and that is actually where i store some already uh, i take these and i convert the values inside of them into numbers that we care about so you know c2 that's c of the second octave and i have a start and a stop time in seconds of that i kind of ignore the uh, the voice because all of the voices in this data set are piano. And then I also have a volume of 0 0.627451, which is just a number, a fraction from zero to one of what the volume should be. And I have that encoded in our encoded notes V1. So let's pull up encoded notes V1. Okay. So as you can see this, this note encoded into encoded notes v1 is 0, 0 0.1. So you see it has the start time and the stop time. But in this uh, situation, it is actually the time since the previous note and the duration of the note. So if you subtract that from, or sorry, if you subtract zero from that, you get the duration of this note and since this is the first note in the song, I just set the time since previous note to zero. Now the third number you can see is the volume. And then the fourth number is negative 24. You might be curious how I got that, but this is actually, this, no, this negative 24 is actually the number of semitones away of the note C2 from our center note, which is C4. So each octave is actually 12 notes. So if you go, uh, how, like I said, I've imported the library, so I have access to all of these functions. So if I go how note to int of C4, it will give me zero because C4 is zero semitones away from C. So, but if I do howl note to int C2, which is the note in the example, I get negative 24 because C2 is two octaves, two 12 semitone sets down from the C4 note. So that's how I get this integer number. Now, our neural network is actually going to take these integers as a separate row of values. So we're going to have to split that out. But for now, I'm just going to get the all of the encoded notes from our data set. So to do that, what I'm going to end up doing is mapping a function called key with the key that I want, which is this uh, encode notes v1 key. Okay, that was, oopsie. Okay, so I map that onto the data set. And then I'm going to call that data set encoded or just encoded actually. and I have a semicolon so it will not 
yell at me for the next five minutes while printing out numbers. So length of we will instead print out the length that we get. So as you can see, encoded is 145 notes, or sorry, 145 songs long, which is the same as our entire data set. The difference is if I look at the first value of encoded, Okie doke. Okay, if we look at the first element of the encoded list, it's going to give me something different than what we had in the beginning, which was an association. So if we look at first of encoded. Actually, we don't just want first of encoded, we want the first element of the first song of encoded. See, that is our encoded number. So now this encoded is just an array of these things. Actually, I'll just show you the first. So as you can see, that is uh, a lot of data. I'm just going to show all of it. This is going to be like 2,000 notes long. Yeah, that's a lot of beautiful data. So yeah, I'm just going to delete that because that's really big. But yeah, you get the gist. So it's each song and encoded is a list of these four things for each note. So what we want to do is train a network to regurgitate these four nodes over and over and over. Okay. So let us start working on the training regimen. So so I'm going to look up a guide that I found on the in the Wolfram language documentation that's actually kind of helpful. It is right to here. So this uh, guide, train a net to model English will be the basis for what we're doing. And actually it was the basis for what I did in the past. So um, the first thing that they do here is they turn their data set into a training data set, which we kind of don't need to do. We'll make a function that does that on the fly. But the uh, really interesting thing is this neural network setup. So as you can see, they have a two layer GRU network, gated recurrent layer, gated recurrent layer, two of them, 128 cells. So that's exactly what we're listening to right now in the background. And what they do differently, I did it the lazy way where I sequentially, I just take like, you know, a random slice and I'm like, okay, predict the next note. And then I just keep doing that. What they do is they actually use this sequence rest layer and sequence most layer to output, uh, not to output, to take the output of the model at every time step and actually uh, use that to calculate the loss. So what I do is I just take the last output of this network and I'm like, how close was it? But what they do in this example is kind of interesting. They use a teacher forcing net, which is taking the output at every single, every single time it feeds the network one of the notes in the list. It's calculating the loss and using that to optimize the network. So this kind of thing is way 
way smarter than what I was doing. So we're going to have to uh, copy copy this. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna I might I'm gonna change the architecture in a little bit, but yeah. So the big thing here is like this is designed to work with English. We are not using English. We are using notes, and notes have additional metadata to what English has. English has characters. So, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then like period, exclamation point, whatever. Whereas this has notes from C or yeah, from C negative one up to uh, B eight, all of that note range. And then it also has uh, this data t attached to it, which is the time since the previous note, the duration of the note that we're talking about, and the volume of the note that we're talking about. So all of this information is very critical for notes, and it's not present in English. So one could say that we are with this looking at at least four dimensional data because we have these four different values for every word whereas this is closer to one dimensional data now of course that's not exactly true because in english uh, as you can see with this unit vector layer we turn words like or not words we turn characters as an a b c d e f g into a unit vector, which means each character gets its own dimension of the input. So the English language, if it has you know, 48 characters or whatever, it will have 48 dimensions. Now we do a similar thing with the note. We uh, turn the note, is it going to let me open this? Yeah, okay, it's just really, really laggy. Okay, that's not what we want. It's these things down here. So this is the network that I have the first time, the one that we're listening to. So basically I have the notes, which is a vector of n classes. So uh, you can see it has, uh, it's, it's a class input. So um, n by 120 is the size of this class input. And the reason it is 120 is that is the number of different notes that we consider. And then we also encode our notes into a unit vector. But in addition to receiving those notes encoded as unit vector uh, character type of thing, we also have um, our note data, which is n by three. And what the three means is it's this first, these first three pieces of information. We have a time since previous note, a duration for the note, and a volume of the note. So these three in pieces of information are kind of concatenated with this 120 dimensional encoded note value. And the combination of all of these uh, pieces of information is our input to the network truly so as you can see here the size of this is n by 123 which is because we have 120 for the note encoding dimensions and then three dimensions reserved for our three pieces of note data so uh, let's start by kind of replicating that input as we have up here. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to copy and paste because what we had before is still pretty good. Uh, the biggest difference is really, if you look at what their example from that I copied from the website here, the biggest difference is they're using this net map operator linear layer uh, 
and then a softmax. Sorry. So we have the softmax, we have the linear operator. The big thing is that we are not using this net map operator. And what this thing does is it will actually take instead of the final output, which is what we do here, where we take the uh, sequence last layer, instead of doing a sequence last layer, we want to grab all of the different input data from the linear layer. Or sorry, we want to grab every single output of our sequence. So at each time step, our gated recurrent unit will have an output state that can be utilized for a prediction. Right now we throw away all of the intermediate output states and we just use this final output as the input to our prediction. But really what this is doing is it's doing all, of, it takes every single output of the network and uses that for training. So this is very, very, way, way, way smarter than uh, throwing all of that valuable training information away. So I'm going to copy our net map operator. And instead of doing output as a sequence layer, I'm just going to do uh, output is, or sorry, output sequence last. I'm going to output is a net map operator of identity. Actually, sorry, no, there's going to be, I guess, two stages in this. So, okay, I also need to copy some data. So we have valid notes. Uh, valid notes. Okay, so yeah, like I said, C negative one to B eight. So I'm going to copy that and run it. So these, this is the valid note range. Okay, so we have range from C negative one to B eight, which 120 notes total. Uh, okay, so what they do is they have net map ar operator of linear layer, and, and then that goes to softmax layer. And instead, we're just going to do identity is the output, and then we're going to do something similar where we have net map operator of linear layer with the length of valid notes, and then also for the note decoder, we're going to be doing, I don't know why that's in a net chain, but that's uh, kind of excessive. We're going to be similarly doing net map operator of linear layer three, because we have three of these additional pieces of metadata. So uh, what these will hopefully do is uh, output a single, uh, not a single, it will output a different uh, prediction at every single time you feed it an input. So uh, let's take a look at this and see if it actually does what we want. Uh, please work. Okay, yeah, so that seems like it didn't fail miserably. That's cool. Okay, so as you can see here, the output size has actually changed from our uh, initial approach. So this is the old one, this is the new one. The new one's output is n by 120 for the note predictions, because like I said, it has n different outputs, one for each time step, whereas the original's output is just 120. And then the next thing that's majorly different is this n by three. It's, uh, it's 
n by 3 instead of just 3. So it outputs one set of three numbers for every single input that you feed it. So uh, yeah, it's just two layers of GRU and then sorry, you combine the inputs two fully connected GRU layers and then we have this output which just splits the thing into this note decoder which is just a linear layer and a softmax and then this linear layer for our data prediction and that is our RNN. I'm going to modify this layer or later to add more layers and stuff like that but this is a very basic network so I'm going to collapse that because we're kind of done with that part and then now for the part of building a training network so uh, this is going to be uh, the teacher forcing net that is described here so we have teacher forcing net teacher forcing network so uh, trnn is training rnn so as you can see i'm using sl1 loss which is a smooth l1 loss function which is just l1 but instead when the number is small you uh, take 0 0.5 times the square of the difference and uh, yeah, so that's a slightly nicer, smoother loss function than just using absolute value loss or L1 loss. And then for our note predictions, so yeah, we use these for the triplets of information, the three pieces of data, the time since the previous note, the duration, and the volume. We use smooth L1 loss for that, whereas for the note itself, we're using this cross entropy loss layer. And cross entropy is just the categorical loss for these unit vector data types that we talked about a little bit earlier. And uh, so now we have, and then finally, it just it adds those two things together and that's our loss function so as you can see that's very uh, straightforward uh, here it's actually you can see it the notes and the note data it goes into the RNN the target notes the target note data the target notes goes in, oh, sorry the target note data goes into the SL1 loss with the prediction notes data and then you have the target the output notes the predicted notes gets cross entropied with the target notes to give you the categorical loss for all of those different categories and then you add those the SL1 loss from the note data and then the categorical loss for from the note itself together and that is our final loss function and we just use that for training so instead we want to use this thing which is it takes the input it takes sequence most and then sequence rest and then right now they only have one type of loss but we have two types so it's going to be slightly different there but we take the entire prediction vector that we're now outputting for every single time step and then we take the entire uh, so okay sorry this takes sequentially the first element of our sequence and then the first two elements and then the first three elements as time goes on as t the time step increases and feeds that to the network effectively and then at each time step the sequence or sr it feeds in the rest of the data and uh, kind of staggered it will take the loss from what the model is predicting at each time step to what the output should be at each time step and the output should also should always be uh, this sequence rest which is the next note 
uh, as time goes on. So, let's get started building that structure. Okay, so, uh, as you can see, why is the formatting off? Whatever. Okay, predict, goes to predict, rest, most, loss, blah, 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 that's fine. And then we have this net port of input goes to predict, goes to a uh, net port of loss. And then we have net port, I guess that doesn't make sense, okay. And we have an input of net encoder with our character list. Okay, so this teacher forcing net is going to predict, or sorry, it's going to take the prediction network, which is in our case, RNN, and it's going to have a rest layer and a sequence most layer. Okay, so sorry, sequence rest, it will remove the first element. And then sequence most will remove the last element. Okie doke. Let us figure this out together. Current network. Okay, so sequence rest layer. Uh, it will take a sequence of inputs and remove the first element. Okay, so they have in their situation, the sequence most layer is running into the predict function. Okay, sorry. And I'm going to have two of these because I also have two types of input data. Notes and then And I'm going to have to copy that for the notes and data. Okay, doke. So we have rest notes, most notes, rest notes data, most notes data. Now we have our smooth L1 loss and our categorical loss. Those are going to be pretty much the same. Uh, the big thing here is uh, cross entropy layer is going to output. Actually, I have this already in here, so I can see cross entropy layers output is a real number. So that doesn't really matter. The big thing is this SL one loss. Uh, it already takes the total. So basically both of these functions will be fine. They just take the total of whatever you feed it. Um, and then finally, I add those two together. Okay. So let's go back to this diagram. We have a sequence most layer going to Okay, instead of note data pre yeah, it's still called that. So that is the same goes to SL1 loss. Sure. That's the same. Then we have the recurrent neural network going to the predicted notes going to the input of the categorical loss, and we have the target note going to the target the categorical loss. Uh, that's fine, except now this is not a net port target node, it is just going to be a target. Which is actually, in this case, uh, 
wish I could see that object. Whatever. C E loss cross entropy loss layer of index, which appears to be the same thing that we have. And it has two things, the input and the target. Okay. So we will get to set this up together. Okay, so we do need net port target node, that doesn't change. That doesn't change. The difference is this target value is no longer a thing. Because now we just feed in, instead of feeding a separate target nodes, we're just feeding it in one list of nodes, so net port of input. is going to something. What would input go to? It goes to the sequence most and the sequence rest. So I need actually two inputs. I still have, uh, I'll just call this notes. And then same thing here, net notes data. Okay, so this notes is going to a sequence most layer and a sequence rest layer. So we will do that. Most, sorry, I need strings. So basically these strings are matching keywords up here. So this is where I set up the different layers that exist, and then this is where I specify how these layers are connected to each other. So I'm saying net port of notes. Uh, why is that inside of the thing? I don't think I meant to do that. Whatever, okay. Net port of notes goes to these two different recurrent layers, most notes and rest notes. And then we have our notes data, which also goes to two separate of these sequential layers. And that would be most notes data and rest notes data. Okay, and for now, that might be okay. Okay, the big difference is now there's no such thing as target notes, so that does not exist. And then I'm just going to write a comment here so I remember what this is. And then I'm going to also say note prediction. Yeah, that's still the same. Okay, target note data, that also does not exist. Okay, let's see how they actually wear their stuff here. So they have input goes to most, goes to predict, Input goes to rest, goes to uh, lost target. Okay, loss input. So we have categorical loss instead of loss, but same thing. Excuse me. We are going to take our net port of, okay, so that's the thing. Target note data, that is actually going to be Sorry, this is going to our SL1 loss function, but it is going to the 
true category of our SL1 loss function. So it will be our target, which is why this comment says target. So target comes from the rest uh, sequential layer sequence rest. So we're going to just do rest notes data because rest means our target in this situation. And then here, our target notes will be from most notes data. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's rest. Target is rest. So it's going to be rest notes. Rest notes goes to categorical loss target. So yeah, their rest goes to target, their most goes to input. So that's the other difference. We have now notes data is not supposed to go to, uh, sorry. So that's fine. Okay, SL1 loss. Note predicted goes to input, sure. Rest notes. Actually, I don't know, that might be fine. Let's try to run this and see where it fails. Okay, target note. Target note is not a thing. Okay, target, yeah, so target note is no longer a key uh, because I named it notes. And then target note data is no longer a thing because I just called it note data. And it is now uh, actually varying. Sorry, I need to do the caps. And because it is now n by the number of classes, and this is now n by three. Okay, and then input port no. Okay, oops, keys, and then I need to do a. Actually, I need to do... Okay, so the, in their example, they actually use this unit vector layer. I'm not using that here because in the past, I assumed the input uh, would be taken care of or put into unit vector form by this uh, input encoder thing. It's not compatible with port nodes. must be n by 120. Okay, so I think these things, like the input specifications actually kind of fall out. So I'm actually going to add just a unit vector layer here that takes the input. Layer. It's just going to vector as whatever I give it, I think. Okay, and then we also have to say that the notes is going to the vectorizer in quotation marks. No, that is not what I wanted to do. Vectorize goes to stack input goes to that. Okay, really stack input is cat, catenating them. Okay, whatever, I don't care. The names are fine. Okay, so let's just see if we can do this again. We do not want to unit vectorify it because now it is actually vectorifying that in the thing. Looks great. Okie doke. Let's try this. Okay, inconsistent value for dimensions output of the net with an operator of layer SL1 loss. Inconsistent value for dimensions. Okay, so we need to look at SL1 loss and net port of RNN, note data predicted, and rest notes data. 
uh, our different sizes or something. So I'm going to say for now these things do not exist and see if we can get it to continue without them. Okay, second argument should be a list of rules. A list of rules. I guess I broke something here. That's not broken. That's broken. Okay, that's also broken. Let's try that. Okay, second argument should be a list of rules. That's broken. Okay, SL1 loss uh, is not existing right now. Did we just get rid of it? Okay, so that seems to work. Anyways, so we have this weird system where categorical cross entropy, it's taking the cross entropy between the rest and the RNN. And the rest does something that I still don't understand why it's the rest, and not, uh, okay, rest removes the first element. Why would I want to remove the first element? Why would I not? Okay, okay, sorry. It removes the first element, so when we take the rest, it is, okay, sorry, I, I get it now. The rest means elements two to the end are being compared with elements one to the end. So basically it's just getting rid of the first one so that everything's shifted over one and then you know, the first output corresponds to the second note, and the second output corresponds to the third note, and so on. So that is what we're doing here. And then, okay, so now I need to fix the SL1 loss function that I made to actually work, because it doesn't seem to work with the dimensions that I gave it. And then we're going to uncomment these things and then figure out why it is borked. Wait, what? Did I, did I do something? I don't think I did anything. Wait, notes, data, note, data. That's a problem. Uh, notes, data. I don't know what I called it. Sure, note, data. Okay, so that's, what did I do most? Okay, I typed A. Okay, notes data is neither valid input. Okay, I need to find where this is used because I'm using it somewhere where it's not supposed to be used, I think. Okay, we have note data goes to most notes data. Why is that S? Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Most note data. Note data predicted and rest note data goes to SL1 loss note predicted and because the input rest note goes to categorical loss target okay and then this is still messed up for some reason I don't really get it okay let's see if that notes data note data for, for layer output of the net 
Okie doke, let's just try to uh, say total Do I need not total? It's like some some no, that's that's mathematical sum. Total totals all elements down to level n. Add up level n, and then n through n. Okay, well that should be a one-dimensional output as far as I think. And okay, I'm just gonna call that back out because we don't need it right now. Okay, so we have a loss function, which is a real SL1 loss. Oh, it's a vector of size three. Oops. Uh, Okay, that's not being used, so that's not right. Okay, sorry. Notes. Okay, that's the other thing. This RNN thing is not supposed to take the note data. It's supposed to take the most note data. So, RNN is supposed to take Why am I even specifying what the RNN takes? Why is it implicit? Is it implied? What is this? Why would they do that? Okay, whatever. Most note. Let's do this. So the RNN, it takes two inputs note data and notes okay so we have most note data and notes oh god okay all right then let's do it okay beautiful that's uh that looks better okay now we need to figure out why this is still broken so we need to like send SL1 loss to uh, loss total. Okay, that doesn't work. Which kind of makes sense because that's what I have down there anyway. SL1 loss. like I feel like there's a, another thing I'm supposed to do here let's look up layers layers summation oh derp okay summation layer layer add Oops, let's try this. Okay, I give up. Let's just do this. You know, we can just make this a chain. So we have loop, okay, and then we have a comma and that. OK, 
Okay, there we go. It Oh god, that's that's not pretty. Whatever. Okay, so we have note data goes to most. Let's make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. Note data goes to most, which removes the last element because we want to do the rest to get the last element. So it removes the last element and gives you the rest of them. And then this removes the last element and that's shoved into the network. And then the network outputs a thing that's compared with the note and then it outputs the note, which is compared with the rest. And then you sum them together and then I need to, uh, I need to make that go into the right thing. Uh, that needs to go to lost total. Okay, yeah, that's better. Okay, so in the end, we have the single output called loss, which is the sum of SL1 loss and categorical loss, which is a function of RNN and rest note and rest note data and most note data of RNN. Yeah, that looks okay. Looks okay. Cool. N by 3, N by 3, N by 120, N3 by 120. Uh, that's a little bit weird, but okay. Uh, that should not be index, I don't think. Categorical cross. Familiar. That should just be like probabilities, I think. Uh, cross entropy. What is the documentation for that? Probabilities or index. I guess it's still bad. Why? Okay, because. Never mind. It is supposed to be index because it is indices until it goes into this unit vector layer, which I set up a little bit ago. And two ways. So, yeah, you can see it's uninitialized, which means it's not taking up any of my sweet, sweet memory. Okay, now let's set up the training function. So this network is also trained slightly differently because as you can see here, it's just, its input is just a sequence instead of, uh, or sorry, a list of sequences. Instead of what I did here, which was the input is uh, training notes and then you have the uh, the different values for I had I had to split it into training and note data, which I guess I'll still have to do because there's two inputs. But the big thing is my data will not have these key value pairs. It will just be a sequence. And also I'm going to make a function that just generates the things on the fly because I don't want to wait to generate the stuff. Okay, so I'm going to split that into training and validation, which I've made a function to do somewhere. Okay, split train val. What a handy function. What do you know? You know, copying, pasting, that's kind of silly, but whatever, I'm just trying to get this done fast. It will eventually be a library, believe me. Someday. Okay, so. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have train. Val. I'm just gonna do end train. So we already have this in this encoded format. And we're also going to do one extra thing. Oh gosh. Uh I 
to define it. You need to run things. Cool. Okay. Len at and uh, sorry, I'm gonna do the not abbreviated. Okay, so we have 129 training examples and 16 uh, test examples. Or, sorry, validation examples. We have zero test examples because we are the ultimate judge. Our beautiful ears will listen to the music and determine if it is good. Okay, and then finally, we do need to decide on a sequence length and a sampling strategy. Okay, so we have this that we did before where it converts it into a key value thing. So we're gonna take that and then we're gonna slightly modify that. So that it doesn't really do that. But we still need the length and we still need to give it a song. So go to song, it computes a random integer from one to minus Lane. Uh, and I also want to say if it's less than that, then use zero. So I'm just going to say max of that and one. Sorry, two. So I, I need at least two examples. If the if the thing does not have two notes, then it is an invalid song and we need to skip it. But that's the thing I guaranteed in my data set. All of the songs have at least two notes. Uh, I is going to be needed still. Is it? No, it's not. I don't think we need I. But and we don't need a table because we're not using I. And we just need this part, which is encoded song up to index. And then I can change that to width. So width is slightly different than module. It's sometimes faster, but basically I just define a single variable called index, which is the randomized index within the song that we're going to use. Wait, what? Why is that a comma? You know what, fine, -2, that's fine. So like worst case it grabs Okay, minus, minus one. I don't know why this is breaking my brain. It is, uh, it is kind of late, but we have a randomized integer between one and the length of the song. Okay, the length of the song minus two. I think that's okay. Okay, so the thing I'm concerned about is if it gets to the end, or okay, if it gets a song that has two notes, then the length of encoded song minus two will be zero, and range of one to zero is not good, I don't think. One comma zero, that sounds is it always going to, okay, sometimes it's zero. So not exactly what we want. We don't want the index to ever be zero because in this language indexes, indices start at one, which 
which is, uh, I don't know, that's okay. You get used to it, I guess. Okay, and then minus two, which is really minus one. And then we just slice the song at index two index plus len. We're going to do up to because I think that does something that will save us if we do something bad. Okay, so cool. And then let's say our song is like a random list of between one and five. And we have two, two of these random integers. So sample song of random integer one, two. And then let's say we want a length of four. There's not four, so like, okay, I guess that, that works. It's just giving me a two of them. Cool, it doesn't crash, okay. So crisis averted. Now we have 100 and we want four. Cool, and now we have 100. Cool, I guess, I guess it works. Do we even need, what is index for? Oh, whatever. I guess it's kind of random how many it gives you because I'm asking for 100 and it just starts at some random location. And it could be close to the end. Uh, okay. Let's say I want to print the index. I'm not sure it's making sense because I don't want to mess this up and crash halfway through training. Okay, yeah, so if index is 12, then it gives me 89 examples. So if index is 42, it gives me 59. If index is 76, it gives me. Wait, what? Uh, 25 examples? 68 plus 33. Okay, well, it's inclusive, so really that's like 67 plus 33. Why did I do that? 67 plus 33 is equal to 100. Okay, that's, I think that's what we wanted. I'm not really sure. But the big thing is if it has like a thousand and I should always get a hundred, oops. Okay, why is, okay, that's a little bit, a little bit off there. Oh, because, uh, yeah, something like that. Okay, well that's not right. Up to that, minus one. Okay. Because I'm inclusive on index, so I want to be exclusive on the upper bound. So that I have exactly a hundred. Okay, cool. That does what I wanted it to. Cool skis. Now let us continue. We have sample song. We need some functions that will generate our datas. So we have uh, generate of so a generator function for a specific or sorry for for a specific data set thing and a len is colon equal to we have enc train no sorry sorry we do not want enc train we want uh Okay, sorry, I need to look up the documentation of this really fast because it's been a little bit of a while since I saw this thing. 
Let us see what is NetTrain's documentation. Okay, so I want this case where it has a function. What happens? Function. Okay, the function takes in a batch size and around. Okay, can I just do that? Yeah, sure. Uh, function. And so this thing is actually going to return a function given the encoder and the length. So uh, we have. Oh, we also pass in a batch size. So we need to generate like a batch of these things. Whatever, each song will generate a batch size number of things in that song. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but it's gonna be easier. Okay, so we have a function of width of association. Or really, this thing is called batch info or something. And that should be in braces, I think, because it's a function. Maybe not, I don't really know. I guess you don't need the underscore. Okay. So you have batch info that your function takes. And batch info is actually with comma enter. With batch size is equal to um, N, which is uh, info at is at batch size comma round not round at round okay and then I'm also going to modulo that thing by a number. Uh, mod batch info round by len of ENC to use. And then I'm going to add one because modulo is not, doesn't start at one, but indices do. Okay, and now we're going to take the generated datas and return them, or make them and then return them. Okay, so sample song, so we're going to map sample song. There's table, on the table. So batch is equal to of uh, we have enc to use I'm oh, sorry we need to sample the song of enc to use at position uh, round so round numbers are going to be one round per song, comma, len, and we're going to copy this batch size times. Cool, cool. Yeah, that looks good to me, that looks good to me, right? So yeah, this thing 
It's a higher order function. It returns a function. Oh my. Okay, and then we're not just going to sample any song. We're going to uh, augment said song. So how augment v1 of the song. So we're going to augment the song, sample it batch size times with the specified length, and then do that. And then we're actually not done yet. We have to do one more thing. We have to do uh, encoded to net input. And I actually did this one already, I think, some more. Uh, yeah, sure. I did something kind of similar. And to note input colon equals of enc song and just not that. Okay. So we want note data which is uh, one of our network inputs. See, we have note data and we have notes. Note data is actually going to be a list of all of our songs uh, at one to three. So we're going to do this. comma one to three. So this is going to be a list of n by one to three. Yeah, it seems like it's not very efficient, but whatever, that's fine. And then this is going to be enc song at all comma one, or sorry, it's, it's four, all comma four. Because the notes in our format, you can see it's one, two, three is the notes data, and the notes is four. So this will give us all of our notes and shove it into this key, and then this will give us all of our notes data and shove it into that key. And I'm pretty sure that's all we need. I mean, it's not validation set, it is actually just, it returns an association. So enc note to input, and then so we have that enc note to input. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then we need to define this too. So I'm just gonna like make sure there's no problems. Okay, generator function seems legit. Okay, so to do this, okay, let's verify notes, data, and notes. Notes data is one by three, notes data, or it's note data. Why do I not, oh my gosh. Note data and notes. Whatever, I should make it consistent someday. Yeah, note, data, and notes. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and then that's all good, I think. And then let's do one more thing. And then like net out to whatever. Let's just train it and see if the loss goes down. That would be good if it's good. Net train. And then for net train, we give it uh, none of this stuff because net train is up here. Uh, T R N N, and then we have uh, F. Is actually F come around length, so I can specify the round length, and then.
generator function, and that's going to take in. Oh gosh, what did I do? It's going to take in our training set because this is the training generator. So we're going to do enc train, and it's going to have a length. Let's just do 25 because I know 25 is not crashy. And then comma, and then round length goes to lang of enc train cool. So this will do something, I think. I don't know. We'll see. Please work first try. It's going to work on the first try, isn't it? Oh. Gosh, there's a print statement. I feel like there's a print statement. Output of training data generator function was incorrect. Oh. Enc note. Enc to net input. Yeah. Okay. I need to get rid of the print statement because print statements are bad. Now it will be more quiet. Notes was invalid. Oh god. Notes was invalid. One or more inputs provided to port notes was invalid. What? It's not invalid. I'm not using that. And similarly, there's something else that I think is more positive. Okay, so we have valid notes. Okay, so let's just try this. Generator function, blobity and 25. Let's see what it's giving me. Of one. Oh gosh. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, so this is uh, not exactly what we want. Encoder to use this enc train length is 25. And okay, so nonless iterator one at patch size at position two does not evaluate. What? This is batch size should be a numeric value called n. Batch size. Batch. Oh. Am I doing functions wrong? I forget how to declare function. Anonymous function. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's okay. Or function of x. Oh, maybe I don't need that. I don't know. Maybe that will fix everything. That would be cool. No. Oh, that's right. It's not supposed to just be batch size. It's gonna be. That's why it was being funny. It's batch size and round r. Batch size is one. Round is one. Why is it italic? I don't like it. work. Hello. Wait, I'm stupid. One sec. Okay. Uh, I mean, that looks okay. Except for the fact that it's not 25 notes. But whatever. Why is it only three notes? 
What did I do? Len. And continue news at around. Okay. Sample song. Len. Index plus len. Len song. Link. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of wrong, but it shouldn't cause that kind of problem. Uh. Note data is all one to three. Notes is all four. Oh god. Okay, let's try this again. Generator function. Why is it not one? Is it two? Okay, could not take positions one to. Oh, oopsies. At encoded song. Song. Now I need to do not that there, I need to do it after the table. Because that's the right thing to do. Okay, that's, that should be better. Come on. Okay, well, that's really not right either. Table with batch size and end note to input of sample song of bat comma len no okay how augment sample song that should be not there it should be there yes yes oh gosh. Oh gosh. They're with Bobbly Bro. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay, that's not right. That's really not right either. Wait, yes it is. It is totally right. That is uh one note data. Two notes data and two notes. Yeah, okay, so four. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's okie doke. I think we're doing it. Let's try this again. And uh, oh gosh, there's a lot of stuff. Oh my, I think it's working. I don't know what that is, but okay. Okay. Uh, oh, it's on my CPU. It's really slow. That's why I was kind of confused. Let's see what my resource usage is. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. 65% of my CPU. 98%. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, whatever. Uh, that's a uh, that's very wavy. Maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I mean, maybe it's getting better. I don't really know. Anyway, the loss is like. Is it going down? I don't really know what it's doing. Anyway, let's go back to this. So we have some layers. Actually, I want to try a couple of things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, pr 
predictor. is equal to let us nut chain of actually since there's two outputs I basically need a nut graph for everything that I do so let's just do this. There's no way around it. Oh, I need to train. I need to save that. Train is percent one one seven. So I'm just saving that into a variable, which will in the future be called. It's equal to that. Net extract. from train. Uh, oops, I need to go backwards, comma. And that has no things. Net replace part. Okay, cool. I'm in now. Then we have is now a net and then we have this encoder object from up here net encoder class valid notes okay okay so yeah notes n by three and then a vector of n classes Okay, and then I need to shove those two final layers into sequence last layers. Okay. And then we need net graph. And then comma do do. You know, and then since I'm doing that, I really just need this net extract Bob the Arnie. Okay. And then I can specify something else there. But okay, so we have the RNN that has been trained, and then we have a last prediction. Equals sequence last. Last layer, and then that's not an equal sign because everything is silly in this world. That has to be wrapped in quotation marks, and then we have this, and then we have note prayer. Okay. Assignment operation of notes to that. Cool. And then I copy that and then okay, doke. So we have as far as assignment goes, we have RNN is the name of this thing. And that on a different line? Okay, RNN. Has two outputs, note pred and note data pred two. And that 
is going to go to in that part of last data pred net pred okay comma last data pred which goes to net port of net pred net data pred okay please work yes yes wait no note data pred Has two outputs, not pred, not data pred. I guess I have to specify the names or something. Net forge of RNN, comma. to let's do a bread. Okay, I guess that's okay. Please work. Note. Note. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So we have that and then that and then okay, net bread, net data bread. Information at predictor. Right. So that's going to be almost a megabyte. Oh gosh. I'm kidding, that's really small. Okay. So it looks like we have all of the things, and then I think the last thing we need is like a, a function that takes the thing and then fixes it. Note data, notes, 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 no. I don't know, that's not what we wanted. Net port. Will that make it sad? I don't know. I guess you can do that because it knows based on its position. That's kind of weird. Whatever. I'll take it. That is good. Note data. Cool. So notes to notes, no data to no data. No data is vector size 3, vector size 120. Oh yeah, and then we have... That's right. And then... Uh, note. Will that even know what this is going to be weird? Yeah, maybe I should just rename it to something else. Okay, notes is a net decoder of this. Uh, whatever, I'll just copy the argument. Data pred R E D D D. Okay, and now we have that. Cool. So we have a decoder thingy. Okay, and 
then now we need a function that takes that and turns it into numbers from nodes. Okay, cool. There's that. It's like every time we make this function, it becomes slightly better. Wait, that was better before. And to, uh, whatever, that's slightly less confusing. From prediction of pred. Pred. Note data. I feel like I did something weird there. send it I guess the first note that we played in the beginning uh, sure first first encoded and then we'll have to convert that to a note object then first note Net input. Mm. Net input of Okay, interesting. We have how code note accumulate that needs to be a list of something like that. I don't know. Cool. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, let's pause our beautiful thingy and then uh, This kind of works. Okay, so we have this. Okay, so generate. Uh, make music of our predictor. Colon equals. First note when colon equals uh, nest of our first note from predictor. Okay, sure, join. I 
hashtag. You join hashtag with, of course, predictor running on hashtag, and hashtag is not a thingy. And of course, when you're done, you put a comma, and then ampersand because ampersand is a great. Okay, and then we have the starting value, which is in brackets, and then we have len. music of predictor comma let's just take this and then comma 25 okay That was actually really fast. Oh, that's beautiful. Good job, good job. Let's do this again with a random node. really something okay magical let me tell you okay so uh, that seems to do things now let's actually do uh, a better network and like training and stuff like that okay and then also we're going to add another linear layer before the output output let's do a linear layer there too thousand or something. I don't know. A thousand nodes. Foo three. Foo two, foo three. You know, I should just yeah, I'm just gonna name this all Gru and then combine them into Gru's thing. So grooves is equal to net chain of these things that and that and that. So now it's a three layer groove instead of a two layer groove. This is beautiful. what we need. Okay, so grooves. Okay, that's uh, probably more variables. So, when we build this, cool, and then next we have this stuff, which is fine. Now we're going to do the training again, and hopefully it's slower this time. Also, I wanted to see what the thing looks like if you do like crazy numbers of samples, like 500 at a time or something. Let's start with 200. I haven't done. The first one was only 25, so I think 200 you get some pretty good context. So this is three layers, an extra linear layer, and 200. sequence length. So let's see. This is still on CPU. Oh no. When 
the net to be drained has not been fully specified. What do you mean it's not fully specified? Oh, it doesn't know the number of classes. It should know the number of classes. What did I do? Did I break something? Okay, created a recurrent unit. Oh, I did that, cool. Okay, gated node decoder. Yeah, layer three. Um, N by three, N class, so it knows the values in that, but for some reason it doesn't know this. Net input something. is not exactly what we need. Net graph, layer one, layer three, m to n. Name to layer one, name to layer two. Yeah, that's not exactly useful for us. That's the same n. What is wrong with you? So it knows the dimensions going into that thing. Wait, no, it doesn't. It just lost the freaking dimensions. Wait, no, okay, vector of n by three, vector of n by three, n by three. Oh, oh no. It's, it is that thing, I need to get rid of this. I guess I can't use linear layers like that. I would need to do netmap operator first. So, uh, actually that might be better. Netmap operator of that, and then that will generate n of those things, and then the other things are on top of that. So it's like not really necessary. Let's just do that, Let's see if that works. Yes. Oh gosh. For inconsistent dimensions for target of categorical loss. Okay. Well, I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna put the things back. And then we're gonna do this. And we're gonna go back to identity. No, with this there, that's kind of useless. I don't even need this. Okie doke. And then we have. This is now not going to output, it's just going to.
Okie doke. Let us do the training again, I guess. And then hopefully it's like very slow and uses all of my memory. That would be cool. It's actually surprisingly fast. Okay, I was expecting a little more oomph. Oops, not what I was going for. Control Z, Alt, Dot. Okay, cool. And then we have validation. Net train, net train. Okay, net train of F. Then we have validation set is set to a generator as well, but it's going to be with our validation data. T set to generator function. Basically the same thing except not enc val and then instead of length of that, it's length of enc val. And I guess technically I should just generate that once. Let's just do that. At one batch size. do this. I'm going to map that onto a list of things because why not? No, I'm kidding. It's because we have to. Map generator. onto a list of batch size is one round is hashtag it's a table of that comma no it is going to be x From zero, oh sorry, from one to len of enc val map that onto the table. Why is that there? And then it says of hashtag. So yeah, this function applied. Okay, whatever val gen. Val data is equal to that map val gen Wait, it returns a function of one variable, so that's kind of redundant. And that's that. Table of associations batch size is okay, let's do two batch sizes and round is x comma that comma so we map valgen onto this table of x whatever the end of the map, semicolon. Len of val data, 
GTH 16, which makes sense because there were 16. Uh, I don't, oh, okay, batch size of two. Okay, but really it's batch size of 32 or whatever. Batch size of one it is, let's just do that. Maybe that'll work, I don't know. Thingy goes to val data. Association of lists or a rule from input to output examples. An association of lists? What? Validation set goes to an association of lists. Examples, validation, positions, validation set has its own documentation page. Oh, okay, I think I need to actually just get the datas and then, okay, let's do this. All right, okay, okay. Patch size, I'm gonna set that back to two because I'm gonna have to do that anyway. Val data, and then val data is flatten val data. Thirty-two. We need to flatten it, which makes sense because it has a batch size of two. Okay, so we need to flatten that, and then okay with. Association of positions. Note data. Is mapped to keys. Key of note data. map of that the key note data onto val data comma
Data. It's not data set. What is it called? Validation set. Val set. That. Okay, that was really messy. There we go. I think that worked. Let's see. Val set. 99% uh, of the work is just getting things into the right format. Okay, so I think it's working. Oh, I think it's working. It's learning. Amazing, truly amazing. You know, that's actually still really fast. Maybe I need to add more layers. Let's see. Dota, Dota, uh, AI, LSTM. If it can play Dota, it can play music, right? Oh, that's the thing, no. Okay, okay, let's see what medium says. No medium, I don't wanna buy your stuff. Okay. LSTM, 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 LSTM. Gosh. Well, let's see them. Oh, 1024 unit. Oh, man. A single layer network. What? Customer reward function and shape each of as a single layer network with 1024 unit LSTM. I mean, maybe that's all you need. Let's try it out, huh? One, zero, two, four. Well, I mean, this is a group, but you know. You know what? We'll just, mm. we'll triple that. If it can play, this thing could play Dota like three times or something like that. I don't really know how this works, but. You get the gist. Okay, this should be even slower. Come on, I want it to use all of my CPU and RAM. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't even, I don't know if this would fit on my GPU at this point. Although I should probably just stick to things that are on the GPU because it's like 20 times faster. But what's the fun in that? I could just run it all night long. What is it doing? It's not updating the UI. Maybe it's thinking, I don't really know. It's not really accessing disk. It's wait, is it using my my GPU? No, that's VLC. Never mind. Oh, there it goes. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is gonna be good. I can 
senses. Oh man, yeah, this is really slow. Okay. Five examples per second. Okay, yeah, this is going to be good. I can tell. Surprisingly, not using a whole lot of memory. Resource monitor. Loop memory. Okay, seven gigabits. I think, I don't know, I guess, whatever. Oh no, did I do something? Oh gosh, what did I do? Oh gosh, I didn't mean to do that, I'm sorry. <sighs> um, let's abort because I don't want to, hmm. okay. Let, let's, uh, let's save because, okay, I have no clue what I did. I feel like I pressed X on something. So I guess I'll have to go back and see exactly what I did. But this is going to fix the things. Data set. Okay, that's just me talking about the data set. Okay, and then we have encoded. And then we have valid notes. And then we have RNN. Then we have TRNN. You know what? Instead of no, let's just do long short-term memory layers. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Just like Dota, right? Except this this is double the Dota net. That is fine. That is fine. Then this is fine. This is fine. That's okay. Yeah, sure. And then we're going to do training again. Okay, we're not doing that because we're using a constant data set and then device. And oh, I'm scared. I just want to do CPU. You know what? Let's do it. GPU. All the G. I'll just do GPU. Mm. Two, second GPU because I think my first GPU is busy doing OBS, and I don't want to mess with OBS because OBS would probably get mad at me. Uh, I'll let it figure out batch size. Please don't crash. Oh no, what am I doing? Dynamic updating. Oh wow, that's a uh, really fast. I guess I really could have gone even bigger. Okay. Uh. Well. Let's try this again. See, look at that. It's not deleting my memory. 
Why is it not deallocating? Lazy. Okay. Well, that seemed a little bit anticlimactic. So we're going to add in that third layer again for extra oomph. You know what? Never mind. I changed my mind. Who needs a third layer when you have two layers? Yeah, I don't even know why I did that because I'm not going to rerun the generation. Okay. We have this thing and then. Goal? Is it like goal? I don't know. I forget. Let us look up the docs for NetTrain again because I keep forgetting things because this is a beast of a function. Okay. Goal, 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 goal. Goal. Uh, Time goal. There we go. Time goal is quantity. Um, let's say eight hours or six hours. I'll probably be awake in six hours. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. GPU one this time and uh, working precision mix. No, I don't want to do the mix. I don't want to mess with any gradients. Okay, joke. Let us begin. I can do 300 or 200 like that. I'm guessing I could do like 300 pretty easily. Okay, well, if the video pauses, then I'll see you guys in the morning. Bye bye.